Hey guys. Part 8 This is what if Naruto took care of Sasuke who turned into a baby. Hit like and subscribe if you like this one and also please check the author in the description. Let's start. <laughs> Chapter 23 Family Sasuke opened his mouth in disbelief at what Naruto had said. I was born, twice? The child asked, very confused. Naruto tried to find the right words. He had no idea how he could prove such a thing to a four-year-old child. Yes, Naruto nodded. How? I don't get it. You were born for the first time a long time ago, Naruto continued, hoping not to confuse the child. You were born to your real parents. They loved you very much but they died when you were a little boy. After that, you grew up and became an adult. Sasuke opened his black eyes with astonishment and disbelief. How could that be? I... I was a grown-up? Yes. But... I'm just four. I'm not a grown-up. That's true, Naruto said. You're just four years old now, but you were an adult once. The young boy stared at Naruto at a loss. What do you mean, Tuchan? You grew up and became an adult. But unfortunately, many bad things happened and your heart and your head got sick. Sasuke continued to listen to the story. His immature mind was not able to understand the whole thing, but he believed in Naruto. The boy placed a hand on his chest, but he could only feel his heart beating. He didn't feel sick. His head felt all right too. My heart and my head were sick? Sasuke asked. Why? You were very sad, angry and lonely, and that made you sick. Sasuke had heard the word heartbroken before, and he knew it was something very awful. Was that it? Did his heart break and made him sick? Was my heart broken? He asked. Naruto was slightly surprised by the child's choice of words. It was absolutely correct. Yes, Naruto whispered softly. Your heart was broken with sadness. Why? Was I sad because no one would help me get better? The boy asked, feeling dejected again. Naruto lowered his blue eyes, downhearted. No. Many people tried to help you, but couldn't no matter how much they tried. Time went by and you got even worse. No one was able to save you. Sasuke tried to imagine how sick he must have been, but it was hard to. When he felt sad it hurt, both his chest and his head because he's always upset. He must have been sad for a long time to get sick from it. Maybe he was so sick that no doctor could heal him. What happened to me then? You had a big brother Naruto revealed, surprising the boy. He loved you very much and wanted you to be happy. So, before he died, he decided to save you no matter what. He was a ninja. The boy's eyes widened. It was amazing that he had a big brother, but he was a ninja. That was so cool. A ninja? My Nissan was a ninja? Sasuke asked, with a mixture of disbelief and excitement. A real ninja? With powers and everything? Your brother was a true shinobi, Naruto explained, not shocked with the boy's enthusiasm. He was very strong and cool but also very kind. He loved you with all his heart and wished you had a happy life. Sasuke grabbed Naruto's shirt. He died too. My Nissan? The child asked. Yes, he died like a ninja, protecting his little brother and his village. He was a great man. But you were so unhappy and suffering so much that he would not die without saving you. So he used a forbidden jutsu on you, a kenjutsu. Sasuke knew a jutsu was ninja magic and he heard about kenjutsu from the stories too. They were very dangerous jutsus that ninjas couldn't use. And his big brother had used one on him? And what did he do? He turned you back into a baby and made you be born a second time, Naruto confessed, before the astonished gaze of the child in his arms. He turned me into a baby? Naruto nodded slowly, while the little boy tried to understand what he had just said. Why? Sasuke asked. Why did he do that? Because you were in pain and your brother wanted you to grow up happy and loved. That's why he decided to make you be born a second time. Like the phoenix, he made you turn back into a baby instead of letting you die. I'm like a phoenix? 
Sasuke asked. Kind of Naruto answered. Sasuke tried to assimilate all these new information. He had been an adult who was turned into a baby by his brother's ninja magic to save him. The boy tried to remember anything about his past, but failed. Why can't I remember my Nissan? When your brother turned you into a baby, he wanted you to be a normal baby. That's why you can't remember. Oh, Sasuke whispered. I'm not a grown-up now. The blonde noticed some fear in the kid's eyes. No, you are just like any other little boy. I, I don't wanna. Hmm? Sasuke was terrified. He didn't feel like a grown-up. It was weird. Sasuke was a kid. He liked how he was. He didn't want to become a grown-up now. But what if the ninja magic spell his brother casted broke? I no wanna be a grown-up, Sasuke said, looking at Naruto as if he was pleading. I wanna be little. I don't want to be a grown-up now. Please, don't change me back. As the boy clung to Naruto so desperately, the young ninja quickly reassured him I can't change you back into a grown-up. No one can. You're going to grow up like the other children, Sasuke. The raven stared at Naruto. I can stay a little boy. Sure you can. Actually, you can only be called an adult when you're twenty. Until then, you're a kid. Sasuke nodded and understood. He was a little boy and not a grown-up. But what about his birth? Did this mean that his second birth was magical? Was he born from inside the belly of a new mommy? How I was born, the second time. I had another Ka-chan? The child asked. Ah. Naruto scratched his neck. Well, not exactly. So how was I born? I didn't have a mama and a papa? Ah, uh, you had, sort of. Your brother wanted you to have a family to take care of you, so... And who are they? Sasuke interrupted eagerly. Who are my new parents? Naruto smiled a little self-conscious. Just me. Sasuke's eyes widened in amazement. Just you? I think... I think your brother liked me. I mean, he trusted me, Naruto hastened to add. The last thing he said before dying was to take care of you. So, he made you stay with me? Sasuke asked, feeling unwanted. No, he didn't make me. He asked me to take care of you, but he didn't ask me be your father, Naruto said softly. Your brother didn't choose me, nor did I choose you. You're the one who chose me, Sasuke. I chose you? Sasuke asked in astonishment. How? Naruto smiled at him before answering. You called me Papa. I, I called you that? Sasuke asked. That was your first word, Naruto said, remembering the scene. I was very surprised. Since you were born, you only cooed and babbled and then, all of a sudden, you called me Papa. Since I was born? The child asked, a little confused. Well, when your brother made you be born the second time, I was the only one there Naruto explained with an amused smile. You were an air-splitting little thing. The first time I saw you, I thought you looked like a bald puppy. Hey! Sasuke squealed affronted. I don't look like a puppy. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Sorry Naruto laughed. But you were really tiny. I was scared to pick you up because I thought I could hurt or drop you. Still, you were crying a lot. And you were freezing too since you were naked. Sasuke blushed slightly. I was naked? Why? All babies are born naked, silly Naruto replied. I had to take of my jacket and cover you with it like a blanket. I was really that tiny. You were this big Naruto showed with his hands. The boy was amazed on how small he had been. So, you were there the day I was born? Sasuke asked. Yes. I held you in my arms and cuddled you so you could get warm. When you stopped crying I took you to Jichan and Bachan Sanin, and we lived there for a while. When you started to grow, you became cuter. Every toad in Mount Mayaboku wanted to play with you because you were so cute and fun. We all loved you. Sasuke remembered playing with the big frogs and smiled. He also realized that he had been born in front of Naruto, and he had taken care of him since that. But he couldn't understand how he chose him, and what that meant. 
But, your brother's jutsu was not finished, Naruto continued, making Sasuke face him once again with wide eyes. He turned you into a newborn baby, but you needed parents. You had to choose them, and you chose me. What happened? What did the ninja magic do? The ninja magic made me your new papa. Sasuke was stunned. My, my, you are, the child stammered. He couldn't believe it. The ninja magic was used to adopt you Naruto carried on. But it was a special adoption. It linked us like a father and son. Linked? It means we're united, you and me. It's true that you don't look like me, but I also gave you something of mine. What? Naruto put his thumb in his mouth and bit it until it started bleeding. Sasuke stared at the red blood that ran down his finger. My blood, Naruto said. Blood? The blood inside you is the same as mine, Naruto explained. Your brother's jutsu was completed because I gave you my blood. Your first father gave you your body, I gave you my blood. I guess you can say I'm your second father. Sasuke was astonished. His adoption was special. He had Naruto's blood inside him. They were united. Do you understand now, Sasuke? I didn't choose my son. My son was the one who chose me. I'm so lucky to have you as my child. I'm so happy to be your second Tuchan. Naruto exclaimed while smiling caringly. The raven-haired boy was speechless. Naruto wanted him. He was happy to have Sasuke as his son. His son. You may not have been born like the other kids, Naruto continued. Your birth was different, it's true. But you were born. You were born to me four years and eight months ago, at sunrise on July 23rd. That's when I became your father. I don't care you and I don't look alike. I don't care if you behave badly or hurt me. I'll always be your father. A ray of sun illuminated the bed where Sasuke and Naruto were lying. With the sun's rays, Naruto seemed even more dazzling. The blonde grabbed Sasuke by his arms and pushed him closer. That's why I won't leave you and I'll never let you push me away. We're a family. A real family. The child felt his eyes burning as he got closer to tears. Real. It's real? The little boy asked. It is real, Naruto answered with a reassuring voice. I don't love you as if you were my son, Sasuke. He placed a warm hand on Sasuke's head. I love you because you are my son. Overcome with emotion, Sasuke jumped into Naruto's arms, his father's arms, and started to cry. He was so happy, so comforted. The little boy felt wanted and loved. He felt he had a family. Papa! 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 The child exclaimed over and over. Sasuke didn't care whether he was an adult or not, or if he was born like the other children. All he knew, all that mattered was that Uzumaki Naruto was his father. His real dad. He could be his second father, but was his real Tuchan. The boy was relieved behind words. His family was real, it wasn't fake. His daddy cherished him and wasn't going to leave him. Sasuke could have been born by ninja magic, but he was born to his two chan. Naruto hugged the child while the latter cried with his face leaning on his shoulder. Sasuke hasn't called him papa since he was three years old. The blonde knew that he had opened a window. Sasuke would eventually want to know details about his parents, on Itachi and on his first life. The answers would not be easy to provide, but Naruto knew he had to reveal the truth even if it was gradually. If Sasuke wanted to know the truth, he would be honest with him. But at that moment, Sasuke just wanted to know that he had a real family. The boy needed that comfort to be able to carry on with his life. When the time came, they'll face Uchiha Sasuke's darkness and crimes, together. Naruto could go home the next day, to the doctor's astonishment. Most of his injuries had been healed and disappeared, courtesy of Kyubi. The young ninja moved through the streets of the village, with Sasuke piggybacking. The child had been a little nervous about the possibility of the bad guys reappearing to kill him. Don't worry, Naruto assured him. They were all arrested. The orphan boy told everything to the police and the daimyo sent guards to get them. They'll be in jail for a long time. Really? Sasuke asked. The orphan boy did it? Yes. He is now a great hero of the village. A couple is taking care of him now, they will adopt him. 
They'll be his new parents? Sasuke asked curiously. I think so. While father and son approached the house, Naruto thought about the letter he had written a few hours to Tsunade, explaining everything that had happened and his conversation with Sasuke. When the Hokage had answered him to send a toad to get her, Naruto was surprised and somewhat confused. The blonde climbed the stairs to their apartment and opened the door slowly. Naruto! The blonde trembled with fear and jumped back. Inside the house, with an angry face and a menacing look, Tsunade was waiting for him impatiently. Ba! Ba Chan! Naruto stuttered. Sasuke looked at the doctor without understanding what was going on. What are you doing here, Bachan? Naruto asked. Honestly, both of you give me more headaches than all the villagers combined, Tsunade muttered. What part of beware you do not get it, Gaki? It was an accident, Naruto apologized. It's the first time I've been in the hospital for years. You think that matters? Tsunade snorted. Tsunade Bachan, it was my fault, Sasuke muttered. Tuchan was hurt to save me. Don't yell at him. Tsunade's eyes calmed when she looked at the visibly repentant child. I know that, Sasuke the Hokage said, sighing. I hope that have served you as a lesson. You could have died. Don't you dare repeat that blunder, understood? Hi, Bachan, the boy whispered, lowering his eyes. Bachan, don't tell me you came all the way here just to scold me and Sasuke Naruto said. Tsunade crossed her arms over her large breasts. You're right, she admitted. As much as I like to stay here and scold you all afternoon, I came here for something else. Naruto landed Sasuke on the lobby's floor. The child looked at the doctor in search of her purse, where she used to always bring syringes. Bachan, do I have to take a shot? Sasuke asked, fearful. Tsunade laughed. Not today. After having been in that hospital... I think the two of you have seen enough doctors and needles Tsunade pulled out a bundle from her bag. Actually, I brought you a present, Sasuke. The boy ran to the doctor and grabbed the present, opening it up full of joy. Wow! Kanai and shurikens! Sasuke exclaimed, opening the box full of ninja toy weapons. Tuchan! Look what Bachan gave me! Sasuke ran to his father, showing him the box full of wooden toys. Naruto knelt down and grabbed the box. It's pretty cool, Naruto said. Yeah. Now I can be a real ninja like my. Sasuke suddenly fell silent. His father had told him that its magic adoption was a secret, so he could not talk about it to anyone, not even about his ninja Nisan. It's okay, Naruto assured, turning to Tsunade. Bachan also knows how you were born. She knows about the secret. Really, Bachan? Sasuke asked. I know everything, Sasuke. Your father can't hide anything from me, Tsunade said, looking slyly towards Naruto. However, Naruto said in a suddenly harsh voice, You'll not be able to play with your new toy. Oh. Tuchan, no. I want to play. The child pleaded, stretching out his little hands in a vain attempt to grab the toys. Give me my toys. Come on. No, Naruto said flatly. You're grounded, remember? Tsunade stared at the two with a confused look. She had never seen Naruto so strict before. He really looked like a parent. Grounded? The blonde Hokage asked. Sasuke pouted. Tell Bachan why you are grounded, Sasuke Naruto commanded. Sasuke stared at the floor and started to give small kicks on the carpet. Because I ran away from home and almost died, the child answered, embarrassed. And? and because I scared my Tuchan. That's right. Because of that, this young man is grounded for a month, Naruto said. Until then, you cannot play with your new toy. Eh? But that's too long. Come on, Tuchan. I said no. Bachan. Sasuke whispered, looking for sympathy in the doctor. You heard your father, Sasuke. If he says you're grounded, you have to obey him. Pouting. Sasuke went to his room, while Tsunade and Naruto headed for the living room and sat at the table, but only after Naruto had locked the front door with his key. I'm impressed, Naruto the Hokage said. I never imagined you'd be able to be strict. I have to be. 
Sasuke needs some discipline from time to time. I'm a parent. I have to act like one. HMPF. Maybe you'll end up being a good Hokage after all. You know when to be tough, and that's important. If that kid gets used to doing everything he wants, you'll never be able to put up with him when he reaches puberty. I know. I remember Sasuke when he was 12 years old said Naruto. Now that I think about it, he never showed any respect for his teachers. Not even to Kakashi-sensei. He will be a difficult teenager Tsunade said with an amused smile. You better be prepared. There will be screaming, slamming doors and many angry discussions. Ah, adolescence. Naruto grimaced. Bachan. I don't want to think about it. It makes me feel old. When Sasuke is ten, I'll be twenty-seven. When he's thirteen, I'll be thirty. Yikes. Now that I think about it, when Sasuke is seventeen again, I'll be thirty-four. And you think that thirty-four years is being old? Tsunade muttered, feeling an elderly woman. When Sasuke is seventeen years old again, she would be seventy-two. Well, it's hard to imagine me at thirty, Naruto admitted. I mean... I'm still twenty-one. Naruto. I thought you had grown. But you are still a kid. Naruto laughed and scratched his neck. How is everyone in Konoha? The blonde asked. They're fine. The village is now completely rebuilt, Tsunade explained. Now we can focus on missions. They all miss you, Naruto. I know. I miss them too, and Konoha. Naruto never told Tsunade that his friends had almost found him and were still looking for him. He didn't want to put them in trouble by exposing them to the Hokage. Well, back to business, Tsunade said, taking several papers from her bag. I did what you asked me and I must warn you that I had too much work not to raise suspicions the Hokage handed an envelope to Naruto. How is Sasuke reacting to what you told him? Okay, for now. He was ecstatic when he discovered that Itachi was a ninja. He loves ninjas, Naruto exclaimed, putting the envelope in a drawer. I've noticed, said Tsunade with a smile. I think he was also impressed that his second birth was with ninja magic. I see. I also want to talk to you about this. Magic, Naruto Tsunade said showing him two medical reports. What is this, Bachan? Naruto asked, looking at the reports. I decided to do a genetic examination on Sasuke, the Hokage explained. A genetic examination? Yes, Tsunade showed him one of the reports where, under a very confusing technical text, was the picture of Sasuke with twelve years of age. Last time I was with you, I took a blood sample and cut some of Sasuke's hair. This exam was done with the kid's hair. His genetic code corresponds to Uchiha's Sasuke. Okay, that was kind of expected, Bachan. He is Uchiha Sasuke. Not exactly Tsunade showed another document. This exam was done to his blood. Naruto looked at the exam's conclusion. The analyzed blood sample corresponds to a male individual. The absence of anomalies in the blood sample indicates that the subject is healthy. Identity unknown. Identity unknown? Naruto asked. What are you talking about? He's Sasuke. Genetically, he isn't. Tsunade explained. What the Shiraha clan's leader said is the purest of truths. Sasuke's body has not changed a thing with the jutsu, but his blood did. Sasuke is a chimera. He has two different sets of DNA. And what does that mean, Bachan? Well, I was curious when I saw that Sasuke's blood did not match its previous genetic code, so I decided to do some more tests. Tsunade pulled two documents and put one in front of Naruto. This test was done with a blood sample from the original Sasuke, when he was admitted in Konoha's hospital. Naruto looked at the document, open-mouthed. In the middle of the exam was a table with lots of letters and numbers, comparing Uchiha Sasuke with Uchiha Fugaku. It was a paternity test. This test is positive, Tsunade said. No surprises there. But when tested with a sample of present Sasuke, the test was negative. Negative? Precisely. The DNA does not match, so I decided to do a third test. Tsunade gave Naruto another paternity test. The test compared a child X with Uzumaki Naruto. The ninja's blue eyes widened as he read the conclusion. 
The probability of Uzumaki Naruto being the biological father of the child X is 99.9999%. Therefore it is practically proven that Uzumaki Naruto is the child's biological father. Bachan, this is, what does this mean? Naruto asked confused. The blood of the child X, in other words Sasuke, has your DNA the doctor explained. The adoption really was magic Naruto. Your blood was not only mixed with Sasuke's, but he assimilated your genetic code into his Tsunade smiled at him. He is your biological child. Chapter 24 Fever Sasuke asked every day when was his punishment over. Naruto was forced to pick up a calendar and mark the day with a red circle. This is the day that your punishment ends the blonde said to the impatient child. Every day we delete a calendar day. Your punishment is over when I scratch the red circle. The boy nodded and spent the whole month staring at the calendar, getting more excited as the scratches approached the red circle. When the big day arrived, the child cried of joy when he saw the box with the ninja toy weapons over the kitchen table. Grabbing the box, Sasuke ran to his room and spent all day playing ninja. Naruto was in the living room. Upon hearing the child shouts and laughter, the blonde ninja smiled. Sasuke was living the happiest days of his life. There was no anger, fear or hatred. There was no need to fight enemies who wanted to manipulate him. He was just a child, a child free to be whatever he wanted and not a weapon forced to fight for revenge and hatred. Sasuke no longer lived in a world of darkness. Naruto walked over to the bookshelf and pulled out a book she had recently bought the basics of ninjutsu. Soon, Sasuke would be old enough to learn to be a ninja. If they were in Konoha, Naruto would take him to the academy, and his senseis would take charge of his education. As they could not return to Konoha, Naruto was responsible. Teaching had never been the Naruto's specialty. Well, anything that involved a lot of brain activity was not his specialty, and teaching was harder than he imagined. He had to know how to explain how chakra worked, how to summon it, explain the difference between the various types of jutsus, the name and use of ninja weapons. Naruto sighed. He would have to study harder than when he was in the academy. Sasuke completely messed up the room during his day of fun. During the month in which he couldn't play with the toys that Bachan had given him, he imagined what he would do with them, and what games would he play. Now that he could play with his ninja weapons, he had built a fort with the cubes, had fought against the monsters who wanted to invade his heart, in fact were his stuffed animals hidden from enemies under his bed and thrown his shurikens against targets. During his games, Sasuke pretended he had two teammates with him, and they all fought together. One was a very goofy boy who was always getting into trouble. The other was a loud and bossy girl. Sometimes they were very annoying, but Sasuke liked them. The girl was very smart, and boy was fun to be with. Together they were the best team ever. Friends Sasuke thought with a smile. They're my friends. Together with his imaginary friends, Sasuke threw himself onto the bed and wrestled with the pillow that he pretended to be a very strong enemy with a giant sword. The boy grabbed the enemy slash cushion and threw it against the door, at the precise moment his father entered the room. Tuchan The pillow slid through Naruto's face, who stared at his son while scratching his nose. Wow, you got a really strong arm, the blonde said, massaging the sore nose. It hurts. Sorry, Tuchan. It was an accident. I was fighting against an enemy ninja, the child explained, getting down the bed. His daddy had told him he could not jump on the bed. Naruto looked at the room. It was total chaos. The bed sheets were on the floor, and the toys were scattered all over the place. Sasuke, you are a real hurricane, Naruto said, scratching his neck. It seems there was a war in this room. Sasuke looked at the messy room. He had been so excited that that he had littered it. Gomen. Tuchan the child apologized. Naruto sighed and grabbed a wooden kunai that was on the floor. It had been painted gray like a real kunai. A perfect toy for those who wanted to pretend they were ninjas. So there was a spectacular battle here and you didn't call me? Naruto asked, surprising his son. Bah. I also wanted to fight. You want, you want to play with me? Sasuke asked. Naruto smiled at him and put himself in position to attack with the wooden kunai in his right hand. 
Of course I do. Come on. Show me what you are made of, ninja. Laughing with joy, Sasuke grabbed another kanai and threw himself against Naruto. Shortly thereafter, the two were wrestling on the floor and tickling each other. After supper, Naruto helped Sasuke clear up all the toys in their rightful place and get ready to go to sleep. When Sasuke was in his pajamas, with his teeth and face washed, the boy jumped into bed and put himself under the sheets and blanket. He had to go to bed early because he had to go to kindergarten in the morning and his daddy had to work. Remembering the kindergarten, Sasuke felt suddenly sad. The day before they had been talking about what they wanted to be when they grew up during class. Kenji wanted to be a guard, Akito wanted to be an artist, Junpei wanted to be an actor, and Ryo wanted to be a doctor. When Sasuke said he wanted to be a ninja, the other children had laughed at him. They said it was impossible and that he was stupid. Some boys had said that the ninjas were all fake and they were just lying and deceiving people. One girl had even said that the ninjas of the stories no longer existed. Sasuke had felt like an idiot and almost cried. They had mocked his dream. Tuchan? The boy whispered. H.M.? You think... You think ninjas are fake? Naruto blinked and sat on his son's bed. Why do you say that, Sasuke? It's just... I said I wanted to be a ninja when I grew up and the other kids made fun of me. They said that there are no real ninjas and that it is all make-believe. Really? Naruto asked. Sasuke moved closer to his father and leaned his head against his belly. They also said I'm stupid and that my dream is stupid too. Naruto remembered very well when he stated his dream to become Hokage at the academy. He remembered the sadness and humiliation he felt when his classmates laughed at him and how no one supported him in that dream. He had felt like such a loser. The blonde ninja smiled and patted his son's black hair. I don't think it's a stupid dream. Actually, I believe that ninjas really exist. And the real ones are even better than in the stories. Sasuke lifted his head and stared at his father's eyes. Really? Of course. I saw them. You saw them? Real ninjas? Real ninjas. And my Nissan? He was a real ninja too. Oh yes. Your Nissan was one of the best ninja I've ever seen. Sasuke went to Naruto's lap, pulled the sheets up and hugged his daddy's belly. What about me? Can I be a ninja? He asked. I'm sure you'll be a great ninja. You think so, daddy? I believe in you, Naruto said, patting the child's back. Sasuke smiled and curled up against his daddy's warm body, grabbing his shirt with his little hands. A few minutes later, he fell asleep and dreamed he was a very strong and cool ninja, starting a new mission with his two teammates. When Sasuke became a dead weight in his arms, Naruto stood up and tucked the sheets and blanket over his sleeping son. While preparing to go to bed, Naruto felt a little feeble. His legs and arms hurt. He felt cold despite having a coat on. I must be tired, the young ninja thought, getting into bed. A good night's sleep and I'll be as good as new. Still shaking with cold, Naruto lay in bed and pulled the blanket over himself. Unlike what was usual, Sasuke woke up by himself. Normally, his father would open the curtains to wake him up with the morning light and shake him until Sasuke was up. But this time... Sasuke woke up alone in his dark room. The child sat on the bed, yawned and rubbed his eyes. He had a funny dream. He dreamed that he and his team had to chase a cat that escaped from its owner. They followed him everywhere, but the cat was too fast. When his goofy friend got him, the cat scratched his face. Baka Sasuke said, thinking of his teammate with an amused smile. The boy jumped up, opened the bedroom door, and ran to the kitchen. Tuchan? Sasuke called but Naruto was not in the kitchen preparing breakfast as usual. Puzzled, the child looked in the living room, but the latter was also empty. Tuchan? Sasuke continued to call. Where are you? Sasuke was confused. His father never left him alone at home. When the little boy returned to the corridor, he realized that Naruto's bedroom door was still closed. Sasuke walked to the door and opened it. Naruto's room was still dark and the light from the hall lit dimly Naruto's figure still lying in bed sleeping. Tuchan, 
Are you sleeping? Sasuke asked approaching the bed and putting a hand on his father's shoulder. Tuchan, wake up. We're gonna be late. Naruto growled in his sleep but refused to awaken. Sasuke climbed onto the bed and continued to shake him. For a moment, Sasuke remembered the foolish expression of his imaginary friend. His father was a bit like him actually. Come on. Wake up, Tuchan. The boy insisted. Time to wake up, Yujuratanki. Naruto slowly opened his eyes and stared at Sasuke with his eyes still hazy due to drowsiness. His head was spinning and his body hurt all over as if he had been given a beating. Mmm. I'm awake, Team Naruto muttered, sitting in bed. He felt so tired, it should still be early. Tuchan, you forgot to wake up Sasuke said, watching his father rubbing his face. We'll be late. Naruto looked at his watch. It was after eleven o'clock in the morning. Damn. Naruto mumbled, getting up with a start. However, a strong dizziness almost made him fall to the ground and Naruto was forced to sit on the bed once more, panting. Sasuke realized that something was wrong. His father was very pale, and his forehead was full of sweat. He was also breathing oddly. Tuchan? What is it? Naruto opened his mouth to answer but wave nausea made him bend over his stomach. Erg. Naruto moaned and ran out the bedroom to the bathroom, where he vomited in the toilet. Sasuke followed Naruto to the bathroom and was paralyzed by the jam, watching his daddy on his knees, leaning next to the toilet vomiting and coughing. Tuchan, what's wrong? The child asked, feeling overcome by fear. Naruto did not respond and continued to vomit. Sasuke started to shake and felt his eyes filling with tears. Daddy had never been so sick before, he looked so awful. Tuchan. Papa, are you sick? Naruto finished throwing up, but remained, panting, beside the toilet. Grabbing a piece of toilet paper he wiped his mouth and chin, sitting on the tiled floor in the bathroom. Ah, uh, that was really bad, Naruto muttered, feeling very weak but a little more relieved from his stomach. I think I'm dying. Naruto lifted his head as he heard a wail, finally focusing on Sasuke. The boy was clinging to the door of the bathroom, shaking like green grass, with tears running down his cheeks. Papa, you're dying? The child sobbed, with his lip trembling. Naruto realized what he had just said and cursed himself mentally. No. 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 It's okay, Sasuke Naruto rushed to say. I was just joking. I was not speaking seriously. Papa, sorry. Sasuke turned away from the door and moved towards Naruto. But you're very sick. Sasuke muttered. Naruto stretched his arms and Sasuke didn't even hesitate to run to his father's lap, hugging him. Sure. There. There. Papa's okay, Sasuke. I'm just a little sick, Naruto reassured him, rubbing his son's small back. It's just a little fever. I'll be fine in no time. Naruto prepared breakfast and took a pill. He was not going to work in that condition, so he asked Sasuke to play quietly in his room and went to lie down in bed. As he withdrew the thermometer under his armpit, Naruto muttered quietly. 38.5 degrees C? No wonder I feel a wreck. Naruto covered himself with his sheets and tried to sleep. In the next room... Sasuke was trying to play with his toys but he could not forget that his daddy was ill. Once in a while, he got up and went to Naruto's room only to make sure that he was breathing. The boy wanted to help his father get better but he didn't know what to do. If he knew how to write, he would send a letter to Bachan for her to come to their house, but didn't know. Tuchan. I want to help. Sasuke muttered. Suddenly, Sasuke remembered that when people were sick they usually drank tea. Excited, the child ran to the kitchen. Tea. Tea. How do you make tea? Sasuke looked at kitchen trying to figure out how to make tea. Water. I need water. Opening the fridge, the boy grabbed a water bottle. Then he dragged a chair and leaned it to the counter, rising up the chair with the water bottle in his hand and placed it on top of the kitchen sink. What now? Sasuke asked, looking at the cabinets above him. Maybe there's some tea in there. Climbing up the kitchen sink, Sasuke opened the cabinets and tried to search the tea bags. However, 
by clinging to a shelf it broke up and all the contents of the cabinet fell to the ground. One of the rice and flour packages opened when they fell to the ground, scattering the contents all across the floor. No! Sasuke groaned. Not noticing where he was going, Sasuke kicked the dishes on top of sink and they fell to the floor with a huge bang. To make matters worse, the dishes hit the water bottle that also swung by the sink and fell to the ground, causing the lid to jump and soaked ground with water, rice and flour. No! No! Sasuke cried, appalled at the mess he made. Naruto awoke distressed and was immediately in a defensive position. Thinking of thieves, the ninja ran to the source of the noise and came thundering in the kitchen. What's that? Oh! Naruto yelled, slipping in the jumble that was on the ground and falling on the flour and rice porridge. Tuchan! Sasuke groaned, still on top of the kitchen sink. Naruto raised his face slowly, which was completely filthy with white dew dripping down his face. Why is this always happening to me, Dada Bale? At that moment, the only sack of sugar that remained on the shelf fell right in the blonde's head. Outside, a crow flew through the sky, cawing. Aho! 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 Half an hour later, Naruto had just finished showering and was wrapped in a towel and drying his hair. He still felt very ill and the fever did not seem to have lowered. All that action had not done any good either. Tuchan? Asked a little voice at the bathroom's door. Naruto turned and saw Sasuke half hidden behind the door with a worried expression on his face. I'm sorry, Tuchan. Sasuke muttered with flushed cheeks. Naruto turned off the hairdryer and approached the little raven. Sasuke, why did you mess up the kitchen? This isn't like you. I just wanted. I just wanted to help you get better, the boy stammered. Huh. I wanted to make you a cup of tea, but I broke the shelf without meaning to. It was an accident, sorry, Papa. Naruto smiled at him. It was hard to believe that this kind and innocent child had been a criminal, which made Naruto regret again not having been able to save Sasuke from all that hatred that corrupted him in his first life. I'm not angry with you, Naruto said. You were just trying to help me, right? Thank you. Sasuke stared at his father's blue eyes. Really? You're not angry? No. We'll clean the kitchen when I'm better, okay? Okay. Sasuke muttered, still feeling guilty for having caused so much trouble. He just wanted to help Tuchan getting better but only managed to make things worse. Is there anything I can do? How can I help Tuchan? Naruto chuckled and placed a hand on Sasuke's head. Stay with me, the blonde ninja said. Stay with you? Sasuke repeated without understanding what his daddy meant. Stay close to me and I'll be a lot better. That's it? The child asked. That's all I need. That night, they both went to bed after eating instant ramen for dinner. Naruto took another pill. He couldn't lower the fever and was feeling increasingly worse. If he continued like this, he would write to Tsunade. He had already changed his pajamas twice because of the sweat and felt his head throbbing painfully in his skull. While trying to fall asleep, Naruto found himself thinking how he had never seen Sasuke being so nice during the academy or in the missions. In fact, he had never really known him before discovering that his clan had been massacred. Would Sasuke have been like that his first four years of his first life? If so, the loss of his family should have destroyed him from within, erasing all traces of the person who he could have been. The hatred twisted his heart and soul until Sasuke became a shadow of his former himself. As he fell asleep, Naruto recalled how he was unable to reach his best friend. How he saw Sasuke sinking into a world of hatred and contempt for everything and everyone, especially Naruto. Their friendship had been destroyed. Perhaps, perhaps it had never been real Naruto thought, his mind affected by sleep and fever. Maybe Sasuke. Maybe I was the only one who thought we were friends. When unconscious, Naruto saw the vision of an old and painful memory. Sasuke was dreaming that he was traveling with his teammates. There was an older man with them. He was responsible for teaching them. He was their sensei. Strangely, Sasuke could only think of scarecrows as he looked at the sensei. They were all in a small boat and were moving through the water and the morning fog. 
his teammate had begun to speak out loud like an idiot, and everyone told him to shut up. They were on a secret mission and could not be discovered. Suddenly the dream changed completely. He didn't feel happy anymore. It was as if the world had become a dark and gloomy place. There was no light, no happiness there. Sasuke was lying on a bed in a dark room. There was a presence in the room. He knew. When multiple presences approached him, Sasuke decided to speak. Who's there? The bedroom door opened slowly. You found me, huh? The intruder said. But I took precautions. What is your objective? Sasuke asked, but without turning to the stranger, staying in bed. Danzo-sama's objective is to bury you. I'm going to take you back to Kanoha, the intruder said peacefully. Although at the beginning, I came here with the intention of killing you. I want to protect his bond with you, the one who's desperately trying to draw closer to. Bond, Sasuke repeated. You interrupted my sleep for something like that? Several black snakes grabbed Sasuke and the room exploded. Naruto squirmed on the bed. The fever went up again and his pajamas were soaked with sweat once more. The blonde shifted position several times but could not calm down. His eyelids were constantly contracting and his breathing became irregular and wheezing. Naruto heard the sound of the explosion. What? The blonde asked. Its size chakra Captain Yamato said. It's that way, right? Sakura asked. The three ninjas ran through the hallways of Orochimaru's hideout. Soon after, they saw a light. The corridor ended in an exit to the outside. And there was Sai. Sakura burst into a run toward the exit. When she reached Sai, she grabbed him by the collar. You! What are you really after? How many times do you have to betray us until you're satisfied? The kunoichi screamed. Sakura, huh? Sakura let go Sai and looked up. Sasuke-kun. Naruto's eyes widened in amazement and also ran for the exit. He stumbled and fell to the ground but got up and continued running. After almost three years, finally. The sun blinded him Naruto momentarily, but when his eyes became accustomed to the light he saw him. Sasuke. Naruto muttered. Sasuke was right in front of them, watching on top of the crater with a deadpan and disinterested gaze that contrasted completely with theirs. Naruto? Sasuke said, staring at his old teammates with a lack of interest. So you're here too? Yamato arrived at the crater and also looked at Sasuke. So I assume Kakashi's with you, as well the raven asked. Sorry, I'm not Kakashi-san, but... Yamato said. I'm here in his place. Team Kakashi will take you back to Konoha now. Team Kakashi. Sasuke muttered staring Sai. Sai withdrew his sword from his back and positioned himself to strike. Sai, Sakura shouted. I knew it, Yor. Everyone turned and stared at Sai. Sasuke shifted uncomfortably in his bed and grabbed the pillow with both hands. His eyes were tightly closed and his lower lip trembling. Shortly after, his whole body was shaking. No, the child moaned. So, he's my replacement, huh? Another loser joins the ranks, Sasuke said with his unemotional tone. He said he wanted to protect the bond between Naruto and me, but... Sakura stared at Sai very surprised. Sai, I thought your mission was to kill Sasuke-kun. My classified mission was indeed the assassination of Sasuke-kun, but I've had enough of orders. I now want to act on my own beliefs. I think Naruto-kun will get me to remember my past emotions. I kind of get the feeling it's something very important to me Sai turned once more to Sasuke. I don't know you very well. But there must be some kind of reason why Naruto-kun and Sakura-san have pursued you so desperately. They don't want to sever their bonds with you. They're giving it their all to secure those bonds. I still don't understand it all that clearly. But Sasuke-kun you should understand. For a few seconds, only the wind could be heard. Finally, Sasuke answered. Yeah, I did understand. That's why I severed the bonds. I have different bonds, bonds of hatred with my older brother. Everyone stared at Sasuke in shock. Naruto and Sakura trembled with horror and grief. Other bonds merely confuse you, 
and distract you from your greatest desires and the emotions that matter the raven continued without being concerned that he had hurt his former teammate's feelings. Naruto closed his eyes. Then why? Naruto asked. That day, why didn't you kill me? Is this your idea of cutting off bonds, Sasuke? Naruto. Sakura whispered, staring at his teammate. The reason is simple, said Sasuke. It's not that I couldn't break the bond with you. It was just irritating to me. Obtaining power based on the method he told me. Naruto blinked. What do you mean? The blonde shinobi asked. It's not necessary to explain that to you. What I can say to you is back then, back then. You're only alive because of my passing whim. Naruto glared at him. In the blink of an eye, Sasuke was leaning his head against Naruto, with his left hand resting on the blonde's shoulder. Come to think of it, wasn't it your dream to become the Hokage? Sasuke asked. If you had the time to be chasing after me, you should have spent that time training or something. Right, Naruto? As Sasuke-kun, Sakura muttered. And so this time around, you'll lose your life because of my passing when Sasuke said, taking his sword from his back. Someone who can't even save a friend isn't fit to become Hokage. Isn't that right? Sasuke? Sasuke drew his sword and tried to stab in Naruto's back. The young raven-haired boy shrank back against the bed's mattress, moaning. Sasuke grabbed the pillow and hugged it, bending his legs to his belly and curling into a fetal position. Papa. Papa, no. Sasuke broke the wooden dome and jumped out of the crater. Naruto tried to stand but was too exhausted, so he merely stared at Sasuke on his knees with his hands resting on the floor. Why? Why don't you get it? Soon, Orochimaru's going to take your body. Naruto screamed. If it happens, it happens. You're still a kid, Naruto. Revenge is everything to me. If I can carry out my revenge... It's no concern of mine what happens to me, or to this world, Sasuke replied. Put simply, either I nor Orochimaru can defeat Itachi right now. But if I can obtain the power to accomplish that by giving my body to Orochimaru, then I'll give him as much of this life of mine as he wants. Naruto and Sakura widened their eyes with shock. The talkings over Yamato said suddenly, Naruto and Sakura, I didn't want to do anything rough in front of you guys, but I'm going to get serious now. Yamato Taishu, Sakura said. Get serious? Naruto asked. He's the same as Orochimaru, a rogue ninja who deserted the village and can't be allowed to roam free. We are taking him back to Kanoha, no matter what. Kanoha, huh? Sasuke said blankly. I've had it with all of you. Sasuke slid his sword on the floor and started doing the hand seals with impressive speed. It's over. Sasuke exclaimed and prepared to attack. No. Sasuke woke up and sat up in bed with a start. The boy was shaking, his heart jumping and panting. Still clinging to the cushion, the child looked from side to side. He was in his room, lying in his bed. None of that had been real. A dream. Sasuke muttered with a drop of sweat trickling down his forehead. It was just a bad dream. Sasuke continued to shake for some time. He didn't have those kinds of dreams for a long time. He vaguely remembered being stuck in a bad dream like that when the snake had bitten him and he had been ill for many days. At the time, he remembered having dreamed of a snake man and seeing his father as a much younger boy, although he wasn't able to remember how daddy looked like. This time, he saw his Tuchan again. He had recognized him because of the picture they had taken when Sasuke was a baby. His daddy was exactly like in the picture. In the dream, when Sasuke jumped into the crater and was leaning against Naruto, he felt everything. The smell, the touch, it was his father, he was sure. And I tried to hurt him, again, the boy thought, remorseful. Why? I don't want to have these dreams anymore. The child got out of bed and peered through the curtains. It was still night, it was very dark. The full moon lit the empty streets and the wind shook the branches and leaves of the trees. Sasuke remembered the sad face of his father in his dream. Tu Chan! The boy exclaimed, going out of the room and running towards Naruto's bedroom. Sasuke opened the door and walked slowly across the room towards the bed. What he saw broke his heart. 
Naruto was writhing in bed with a pained expression on his face. He had his forehead wet with sweat and his blonde hair stuck to his face. He was panting and groaning. Ah, ah, erg, Naruto moaned. Papa, Sasuke muttered, not knowing what to do. Naruto moved once more, always shaking and wheezing. Sasuke's eyes widened when he saw the same pained expression on his face as he had seen in his dream. A few seconds later, two tears streamed down Naruto's face and he began to sob. Papa! Papa don't cry! Sasuke said, putting his hands on Naruto's shoulders. Please don't cry! Naruto continued to cry silently. Sasuke felt his own eyes filling with tears. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know how he could help. Naruto's hand slipped out of the bed. Sasuke stared at the hand, remembering what his father had told him that morning. Stay close to me and I'll be a lot better. Sasuke reached out and held Naruto's hand, squeezing it tightly. Naruto's much longer fingers also squeezed the little hand. I'm here Sasuke said at Naruto's ear. I'm here with you. Naruto watched Sasuke, Orochimaru and Kabuto disappear leaving Team Kakashi in the crater feeling overwhelmed by feelings of hopelessness and failure. Naruto lay on the floor, feeling that all light was absorbed by a cold darkness. Full of sorrow and grief, Naruto began to cry and sob. The cold was entrenched in his skin, his blood and his heart. It wasn't worth it, no matter how hard he tried, even training, even if he was stronger, Sasuke would never understand. It was quite obvious that he felt nothing but contempt for the team. The dream of having Sasuke back in the team and that everything could go back to the way they were disintegrated like glass. The bond that Naruto believed existed between them had been only an illusion. Sasuke would never accept Naruto as someone close to him. Naruto felt the cold becoming increasingly unbearable, but the pain in his heart was even worse. Everything had been in vain. There was nothing that he could do anymore. Sasuke was gone. Huh. Naruto opened his eyes when he felt something warm hold onto his hand. Naruto turned and looked at it. A pale hand grabbed his hand and squeezed his fingers tightly. I'm here said a familiar voice. Naruto looked away and saw Sasuke at his side, clutching his hand tightly. I'm here with you Sasuke said much more clearly. Naruto looked at the raven and again to hand, also holding tight. Slowly, a bright light blinded him. Naruto opened his eyes with difficulty due to the light, seeing that Sasuke's hand had become much smaller, barely able to grab him three fingers. Still drowsy, Naruto saw teenager Sasuke become the black-haired child lying on the floor beside Naruto's bed, holding his hand. Losing the numbness of sleep, Naruto smiled although he was confused as how Sasuke had known he needed him. The boy mumbled something unintelligible, and slowly opened his eyes. Hey, Naruto greeted, causing Sasuke to look up. Tuchan, the child said, still sleepy. Morning, Sasuke Naruto greeted. Why are you sleeping on the floor? Sasuke sat up and rubbed his eyes with his left hand because he wasn't going to let go of his daddy's hand. You were sad, the child said. You were very sad and crying. I tried to wake you up but I couldn't. I was scared. Naruto grabbed Sasuke and laid him in bed with him. The boy leaned against Naruto's chest right away while the latter involved him in his arms. Are you feeling better now, Tuchan? Does it still hurt? Naruto realized he no longer felt either sick or tired. The fever disappeared completely. I think I'm healed. I feel much better now. Thank you, Sasuke. Why? I didn't do anything. You stayed with me when I was feeling bad, Naruto explained. That was all I needed. We're not sad anymore, Tuchan. Naruto pressed Sasuke's small body against him. No. I'm very happy now, replied Naruto. I have my son with me. I could not be happier. Sasuke blushed slightly and buried his face in his daddy's chest. The dreams he had were just bad dreams. Sasuke would never hurt his father like in the dream or treat him that badly. Those nightmares were all lies. More lively. Naruto smiled while watching the blue sky through the window. The past didn't matter. All they had was a future ahead. It was time to let go of their sad memories and move forward. 
Tu Chan? Yes? I don't feel good. Naruto put his hand on his son's forehead. Sasuke had a fever. Oh no! Not you too! Naruto mumbled, surprised by his bad luck. I think now is my turn to take care of you, Sasuke. Want a drink? Are you cold? Papa? Hmm? Can you stay here with me? The child asked. Oh, sure, Naruto said, turning to lie in bed with Sasuke in his arms. Papa is here with you. Although he felt cold, his throat hurt and was tired, Sasuke smiled and curled up against Naruto. Papa the child whispered, almost inaudible. You're so warm. The little boy slowly closed his eyes. I won't hurt you, Papa. That's it for part 8. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.